When manufacturers describe their headphones as flat, this is deceiving and definitely not what you think. There is also a much more fundamental concern you really need to consider when purchasing headphones. Hi, Ed Thorne here. The traditional headphones we are used to using in the studio are dynamic headphones, which much like a speaker, use a magnet inside a voice coil to drive a diaphragm to produce sound waves, basically the opposite of how a dynamic microphone works. These are usually relatively cheap and produce a broad frequency response, but they are often prone to distortions at higher volumes due to the amount of movement they create inside the chassis. Planar magnetic headphones use a paper-thin conductive diaphragm with an electronic wire embedded in the membrane sandwiched between magnets. Sending an electromagnetic signal through this wire creates a series of alternating positive and negative polarities which causes movement between the magnets creating sound waves. But what does this mean for us? Well, the result with these Odyssey LCD XCs is incredible clarity and spatial detail, enhanced stereo imaging, and virtually zero group delay, also referred to as secondary resonances, very common in dynamic headphones. But there is another even more important result we'll discuss in a moment. Now, some of you will be wondering if more expensive headphones, such as these Odysseys, are flatter than their budget-friendly dynamic counterparts. But the problem is, flat is a common misconception in audio. The reality is there is no such thing as a flat frequency response in a headphone because A, it's acoustically virtually impossible to achieve, B, it is simply not desirable, and C, what manufacturers describe as flat is in fact a little deceiving, and like I said earlier, definitely not what you think, and here's why. The Harman Curve was developed by scientists and audio engineers in 2012 to create a theoretical target sound signature designed to produce the best sound quality that most listeners would prefer. When people describe headphones as flat, they are in fact referring to the frequency response deviation from the Harman Curve, so the difference between the two curves. This is commonly accepted because research dictates most people prefer this sound, but also because it is theoretically the closest sound to how our ears perceive audio coming from monitor speakers in a room that can be achieved in a headphone. So flat is the difference between the actual frequency response and the target Harman curve, not a flatline frequency response we would see in an EQ plugin. To help me illustrate this, I have borrowed some diagrams from the Audio Science Review website to compare these Odysseys to my Sennheiser HD 600s, which are the flattest frequency response headphones I've heard. Now, before some dull pedant nails me in the comments, because one set is open back and one set is closed back, firstly, I could not find any information regarding the equivalent closed back model of Sennheiser's, and secondly, this is not a comparison of open back versus closed back. Let me repeat that. No, can't be bothered. But to demonstrate the difference between planar and dynamic headphone technology, using headphones I personally know very well. In these graphs, we can see the frequency responses for both headphones relative to the Harman curve, which is the blue dotted line. Both headphones are exceptionally close with their slightly differing variations. In these next graphs, we see the frequency response deviation from the target Harman curve. This is the version of the frequency response most manufacturers show us because it looks flatter and more desirable than the actual frequency response curve. Again, they're very similar with arguably the Sennheisers appearing closer to flat. So in theory here, these are very similar sounding headphones. However, there's one major difference. Here we can see the total harmonic distortion, or THD, created at three different sound pressure levels. The Sennheisers, as you can see, are a mess below 200 Hz, with the Odysseys are virtually distortion-free, and this is important. Headphone calibration profiles from the likes of Sound ID Reference or D-Sonic real phones are common, and in some cases, they work pretty well. In my experience, if you have to go beyond about three decibels, you start getting into problems. However, dynamic headphones often don't have the headroom for the necessary frequency calibration required without introducing harmonic distortion. The Odysseys have acres of headroom, and with special thanks to this person whose name I'm not gonna attempt, we have a tailored EQ calibration curve that works flawlessly to match the Harman curve, turning these headphones into a masterpiece of audio engineering.
Now you might be thinking, I'm not paying £1,300 to buy headphones that I have to calibrate. I expect them to be flat. Well, I, I don't blame you for thinking that. But as we've discussed, this is virtually impossible. And what you're paying for with Audacy Planar magnetic headphones is the absolute lack of distortion so you can create whatever clean EQ profile you need. Headphones of this quality highlight incredible detail in your audio, including delay and reverb tails, accurate instrument placement, and highlighting frequency masking problems. You might argue closed backs are not ideal for mixing compared to open backs, and typically I would agree with you, except these don't suffer the low-end buildup and secondary resonances that most closed backs do. And with the correction curve, they are a delight to mix with. But where these headphones really come into their own is recording. They offer great acoustic isolation and immense instrument separation, which makes recording vocals an absolute pleasure. I hope this video has helped you understand why Odyssey headphones are expensive, but also why they're worth the extra dollar and the importance of low distortion. I've been Ed Dawn. It's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one.